Well, you know, it's a form of insanity, uh, but that's the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. But who are these idiots? Who, who are these idiots, the five people on the, on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission? Where do they hail from, Dave Freeman? Well, what you, what, what you apparently have not, despite all of your exposure to these people, you haven't yet accepted the fact that nuclear power is a religion. Yeah. It is. To these folks, it is a religion, and it is a religion that they believe in with the same passion and lack of any thought as any other religion. Well, uh, well what, what's the reason? Do with, I don't understand but, this. I mean, I know that religion for a lot of people is because they're scared of death, so they want to believe, you know, pie in the sky when you die sort of thing. No, 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 no. It, it, it's what a guilt it? trip. It's a guilt trip. How do you mean? Plain and simple. Well, we started off by dropping the bomb, yeah. and as soon as Truman heard about uh, nuclear power, he said, we've got to make something good out of this. We've done something bad, now we've got to make something good. So America had a national guilt trip over nuclear power, and that resulted in the Adams for Peace. It was Eisenhower's major speech. We mm. spread it all over mm. the world. We, we established... Uh, nuclear power in every country we can think of, including Iran. <laughs> and now now we, we seem to regret it, but the truth of the matter is atomic energy was considered the wave of the future, and it was built on a massive guilt trip, and it is a religion that people, they believe that we just, it's just got to be good. Got to be good. It's got to be good even though it's not good. It's got to be good. <laughs> Facts have nothing to do with it. I mean, have you ever spoken to a, a uh, Orthodox Jew or a, a hard right Christian or any, or, you know, a Muslim of, of extreme faith? Uh, facts have nothing to do with the subject. Yeah, well... And, the, and, you, and you do not get appointed to the NRC uh, unless you kind of drink the Kool-Aid. What about Alison McFarlane, the new chairman of the NRC? Well, she, she, she's a geologist. She slipped by because they wanted to get this other uh, religious person uh, nominated and confirmed again. But four of the five of them are true believers. She may not be. And, you know, they, they have a maverick in one well. But, it, you know, I learned one thing when I was the head of the Tennessee Valley Authority that was essential to any success I had. You have, if you have a five-person board, you got to learn to count to three. Yes. If you have a three-person board, you have to learn to count to two. Once you get that through your head, everything else follows. And they always have a working majority of true believers in nuclear power at the NRC. A possible exception was when Carter was president, when we had some pretty good people on there. But other than that, it's, it's been a, a closed deck, and it's a very closed deck right now. Four of the five are true believers. So I'm not surprised at anything they do. If it's an unmitigated good, it's going to be an unmade good forever, and it's a sin to shut down the plant. Yeah, you know, it's amazing to me, too, after Fukushima and, and that ongoing absolute catastrophe. There you go again. There you ongoing... go again. You're trying to apply logic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. you gotta, you got to know the opposite. you got to know the opposition, my dear. Now... There's there's still a possibility of persuading uh, the 99% uh, with facts, and that's the job that you and I and others have. And and frankly, uh, I think that Fukushima opened the door again uh, to uh, people talking about the subject, and we feel that if we can make an example of one or two really uh, troubled some plants and get them shut down that we can reignite this movement and we are uh, we are learning that we get more and more people in California you know, concerned but we but it's a hard fight to get into the mainstream media you know do you know who owns uh, CBS and NBC yeah and NBC G and, and NBC GE and Westinghouse that's right and they build nuclear yeah. power plants and missiles but, and nuclear weapons so you never hear a discouraging word about nuclear power. But, you know, uh, it, it's a tough fight. That's why people like you and I are in it. 
That's right. Um, you never took on anything easy, uh, but but you know, in a way, uh, you had a you had reason to feel a real sense of accomplishment, and you still have. I mean, uh, the the weapon side has not gone away, but certainly we made it through fifty years uh, pretty well by luck, uh, sheer luck, sheer luck. Yeah, but but the effort the effort is is been you know thus far you'd have to say more successful than not and we won the civilian nuclear power battle no none were bought for 25 years that's true it's just that we got a bunch of of uh, what i would say unthinking environmentalists that think that have chosen nuclear power as being uh, a way to uh, avoid carbon and anybody that would substitute plutonium for carbon is an idiot. Oh, well, that's opinion. a great statement. Substitute plutonium for carbon. I'm going to use that's, that. That could be a bumper sticker, Dave Freeman. Well, you can say what you. It's just true, uh, yeah. and 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 unfortunately, uh, but fortunately, I think that we're fighting back now, and we're finding that we can uh, spread the uh, crowd in our campaign. In, in San Onofre is is attracting more and more uh, attention, and we've kept the plant down for four months now. They can't About open that four. plant; it's just too fragile with those steam tubes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but it, it but it's taken a really serious effort on the part of Friends of the Earth that I'm advising yeah. uh, to to mount this effort, and uh, we now have the utility conceding that they're going to keep it down. Throughout the summer, because they don't know, really don't know what's wrong with it, no. <laughs> which is quite an admission. Quite uh, an admission, yes, yes. Um, so, Dave Freeman, um, what what do you think would happen to the true believers if there was actually a proper meltdown in America? They, they, they that wouldn't that wouldn't change them. It, it wouldn't change them if if hundreds no. of people were dying of acute radiation illness with their hair dropping out vomiting and bleeding to death, and then an epidemic of cancer well, five years this, later? It, this happened in Japan. It didn't affect Yeah, them. but I don't think Americans care too much about Japanese, and I certainly they didn't care about Russians. I was on the ABC well, radio. Well, now, you, 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 you phrased your question in a way that I'm answering it in a narrow sense. Okay. Obviously, it would change public opinion in America. Yeah. But you asked me about the true believers. Yeah them is the religion nothing has changed their opinion listen uh, i come from the tennessee valley i went back down there uh, to the tva board the other day and and confronted them face to face and i told them that they're just treating this as a religion they yeah. have facts that show that that the nuclear plant that they want to build is more expensive uh, than any other things they could do they're doing it because it's the hometown product, and they believe in it. Uh, you know, uh, people like that, uh, but they can be marginalized. If, God mm. forbid, there were a terrible accident in America, it would it would change uh, the vast majority of people. But right now, the true believers are very influential mm. because they control all these national labs, which have senators in the West that represent them, and they they have true. It's become a political mantra of the, especially the Republican Party. But there are a lot of Democrats, uh, pro nuke, and they've gotten the cover. You know, there there is a special place in hell that is reserved for environmentalists that support nuclear power. I agree, because they have they've given a thin veneer of cover to the nuclear industry. Yeah. But, so that they can say, well, so-and-so who used to be in Greenpeace uh, says that we're clean. What's wrong with you, buddy? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's difficult to, uh, uh, you know, combat that kind of combination. Well, I'll join Edward Teller in his special place in hell. Yeah. You know, Mr. Teller once came to a big meeting in the Tennessee Valley when I was chairman, uh, and uh, Senator Baker had called the meeting, and he was sort of a friend of mine. And Teller sat down next to me. Yeah. He didn't say he didn't say hello. No. He didn't say anything. He turned to me and says, "Mr. Freeman, 
I believe that I disagree with everything that you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> to which you replied? Those, those were his exact words. <laughs> I think I said, yes, I'm very proud of that fact. Well, There's I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about Edward Teller. I was invited by a southern university, I can't remember which, to go down to debate Teller and who's the actor who played God or Moses in the film? What was it? Charlton Heston. Yeah. I was to debate Teller and Heston along with Admiral LaRoque and me. And anyway, I said, look, I'll come on one condition that I get the last word. So, okay, that was all right. So I arrived and then Teller arrived later at the small airport and they told him that I was getting the last word. Well, he said... He called a special meeting of the board before we were to appear and it was to be televised and he said, I will take this university down if you <laughs> don't give me the last word. And I thought, bugger you, I'm a female, you did Oppenheimer in, you destroyed him, you're not going to destroy me. And so, uh, you know, I, I would not concede and the poor old president of the university was slipping on his chair almost under the table, you know. And finally I thought, and he was so pig-headed and obstinate, and I thought, you know, you're really a killer, you are a psychological killer. Anyway, after half an hour I thought, well, it's only a debate. So I gave way and, and the president jumped up and gave me a huge hug, but... Um, what I, he was scared of was that I would expose him and stupidly being brought up to be an Australian lady, I didn't do that and I should have done it, you know. You, I got a glimpse of how evil this man really was. Well, he, um, he didn't let the truth stand in his way, that's for sure. No, no, no. How did you... Well, Dave, are you a physicist by training? How did you come to... No, I'm totally, not a Well, what are you by training? Well, I went, uh, I'll tell you, it's a lot, not a short story. I uh, went to Georgia Tech yeah. and studied civil engineering and was any good at it. And after four or five years of struggling as an engineer, I went back to, to school and I went to law school and I graduated first in my class. So my formal training is in civil engineering and law. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, I uh, know physicists for what they are. I mean, they're usually very intelligent people who uh, uh, are dedicated to the, to their profession, and they're mostly fairly narrow in their thinking. Now, the really brilliant ones are very brilliant, but, uh, you know, I always thought that the fusion research program was a welfare program for high-energy physics. Of course it is. It's their wet dream. Yeah, and it goes on and on and on and on. So, but, and, and you know, I, I, at one time I was in the science office uh, because Johnson placed me there to keep me out of politics. And <laughs> Why did he want to keep you out of politics? Because he was from Texas and he's an oil man, but he knew that we needed an energy policy, so he hired me to begin to lay out an energy policy uh, for the country. But he didn't want it. And he knew that the oil industry would just tear it apart. And, and, and so he was trying to protect me, and he did. Mm. And the interesting thing is that I would then see all, all these. Uh, Princeton would come in every spring with, quote, a breakthrough on fusion power, just trying to get more money for their tokamaks up there and all. So I, can, I know that these scientists can be ardent uh, lobbyists for their pet. Uh, projects, and so I treat them as just another bunch of special interests, really. Well, how did you learn about the evils of nuclear power? What, what did you read, or who had an influence on you very early, Dave Freeman? 